Hello everyone, welcome back to Fancy Gee, where we're gonna be looking into all crazy stuff that actually makes your computer fancy. <laughs> so, um, as I promised last time, uh, we're gonna be looking at in into uh, how we can create something that is gonna look into the stock price for us uh, of any stock, right? Uh, of any company in the stock market. So for that, we're probably gonna use something like Yahoo that provides us the information for any stock price, stock um, valuations, or maybe even Google. Um, so we can just type out a, uh, to the moon. Um, <laughs> so we can just type in any any sort of um, a company here and then we can you know track what, what the value, their value is. So to do that, let's get rid of Safari for now and let's open our terminal and in here, um, I actually started doing a little bit of handy work before and in, in the behind the scenes. So what I'm going to do here is actually going to remove the ones that I have today. So fancy wallet, fancy click wallet. There we go. So I'm going to remove it. Let's start fresh, shall we? So let's make a directory with fancy wallet and let's go to fancy wallet, wallet, and let's open that up in Visual Studio Code. Nice. All right, let's maximize it. And let's create a new file here. That one is going to be our setup.py. Yep, very much. Very good, very good. And we've already seen here how to uh, create our setup for uh, installing it via pip. So I'm going to do it a little bit faster than last time. So from from setup tools and ports, setup, and find packages. I could have done this actually uh, with a, before, but you know, you guys want to see how we would do it um, literally from scratch as well. So I'm going to do it here the same way you would do it in your computer. You're probably not. You're probably just going to go to my GitHub, I know, and you're going to just copy and then change your name. I know you're going to do that, so don't worry about it. <laughs> it's going to be our secret. Um, <laughs> what was I doing? Yes, right. Uh, packages. This time I can type right, and we're gonna find the packages again. Same stuff that we've done before. The uh, install requires. So what is required for uh, this package? Package. So it requires now click, of course, because this is gonna be a command line interface, and we're gonna install something new here. So it's gonna be uh, requests. This is here to actually do HTTP requests uh, using Python. I'm gonna show you how to use it. Uh, also, we're gonna need a, a version string here. Uh, let's start from the beginning. That's a good thing to do. And uh, we're gonna need an entry, the entry points, and that is going to be well. This is actually a string, and uh, console scripts, console scripts. Uh, and let's uh, call it um, fancy wallet. And it's going to come from the fancy wallet module and fancy wallet entry point. Cool. So let's open up our terminal here. Let's install install this little fella. Very good. So now if we can just call fancy wallet, it, nothing happens. Awesome. All right. So let's create our functions here. So let's create fancy wallet dot pi and in here import click import click and create a something new here actually. So um, click has the command option here as you, I have already shown you guys before. But today we're going to use be using something different. We're going to be calling out a group. Now um, there's not a lot. Um so f groups here, they are actually used for grouping commands. So um, it's it's a command that is gonna group another subset of commands that are gonna be called using the same command line interface. So the example here is that we're gonna define the fancy wallet, fancy wallet CLI here. And this is gonna be a group that, um, you know, um, fancy commands to manage your assets. Well, probably we're going to get to that point at some point to actually manage our assets. And then here as well, we can create a, another group of commands that is going to be to get the stock price. So look at that. 
Uh, so then we can we can create a get uh, uh, another group called get stock price. Eh, sorry, uh, uh, def uh, get group, and this is going to be named uh, get. And inside of that group, I am going to so this is group. Uh, group of commands to get something something and inside of the get group we are going to create a command to get stock price so i created a group for get because we never know if we want to get something else let's let's say uh, a good, uh get the value of our in entire stock assets if we want to get uh the analysis analysis of a stock price if we want to get the earnings any, anyhow, it could be any, any kind of thing. So for getting the stock price, and then finally, we're going to get a command here. So and this is going to be named price. Oops, no, <laughs> sorry, name equals price. So we're just going to get a price for it. And uh, this is going to be the actual command here. So gets, oops, gets the stock price. So now let's, let's wire it all up. So for the command of fancy wallet, we can do something really cool here. So we can add a command of get group. And then on get group, sorry, actually I want to do this before. It's going to be a reference, doesn't really matter, but I like to be you know consistent with the order. And then get group is going to have add command gonna have the get stock price command all right let's see how it looks like shall we so if you call fancy wallet now we're gonna have a command get group so it's a group of commands to get something and we're inside of get we're gonna have the price command that gets the stock the, the stock price perfect that is good already now that we have something that is all wired up and we can finally you know just go to the command we can start working on our actual command in here so to do that i'm going to just look into safari here real quick and we're going to go to google.com and i'm going to open up the um the inspector so the developer tools in there i'm going to use the network tool and I'm going to look into which API or which requests, web requests are done in the back end for Google to actually get the stock price of something. So this is a, a good way for you to get, grab you know, uh, a hold of what is actually happening behind, happening behind the scenes of, on your browser. So whenever I type out GME, um, it's actually going to do a, a Google search. Let's see. All right, good. And it's going to return it all here blah 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 is there anything interesting here for you know stock price client blah 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 you know what that might be finest there we go finest whole page price updates and that awesome all right so this is going to grab the, the price uh, update for something this is a get request and this very good very good uh, is asking for uh, where's this stock naming here oh, that might not be as easy as I thought it would be no worries so now I have another option which would be to actually try to to figure out like uh, in the position this and then parse it out from the page but let's look into Yahoo Finance Yahoo Finance and in here probably it should be a little bit easier so let's just clear up our logs in here Jesus, that's a lot of tracking, isn't it? Come on, clean it up. Yeah, clean it up. Bye bye. And of course, my computer just dying here today. Clean it up. Clean it up. Anyways, I don't think I care anymore. Back here now. I now that I am here in this page and I can actually inspect everything that is happening on this side. 
what we can do is try to find where is Yahoo fetching this information from. So the easiest way to do that is try to filter it out uh, all everything that is not that is HTML, CSS, images. Um, we might be looking at an XHR request in here, and would you look at that? There we go, GME. So let's look at what it is. So this is actually a chart uh, result that actually re returns a bunch of things. So in here we have the result itself. So the symbol, which is GME, the currency, the um, the previous close. You know what? That might actually be exactly what we need. We might be looking just at the regular market price to actually fetch what, whatever it is. So you know what? That's pretty much as easy as it gets. Uh, so let's, let's look at what the request actually is. So the, the, the request here, uh, as there is actually cached from my machine, uh, should probably be, uh, this looks like a get request. The way that we can do that is, let's see, let's do the query of the chart for GME. So it's a V8 query one. So this is probably their API. So what we can do here to, to test, there are a bunch of ways to do that. Uh, the easiest one, fastest one is actually do a curl. And there it goes. So I didn't need any tokens or anything. This is a pretty much out in the wild free <laughs> API that you can query stuff out. And you just need to have the, you know, the, um, the full name that they actually use for their uh, chart query. So what we're gonna do here to actually get the stock price, we're gonna do we use that that requests library that uh, I was talking about requests that actually gives you something really cool, which is request requests dot get, and in here I can just pass along a query that I want to to run. And this is gonna run a get request for us. Simple as that. And we're gonna have a result. And from that result, um, or let's let's just uh, look into what it looks like. Before we run this, let me just show you here from Python itself. So if we import here requests and run requests dot get, and then run the GME query, we are going to see in the result result a bunch of information here so this is a response 200 and dear this this is quite useful if you if you're just looking to the objects this is going to show you everything that you have in your objects itself so in here we're going to look into the actual request that we sent the code of the, that we it returned the text that is coming back from the request which is it has a bunch of information you might not want that and I think what we want from here is there should be a JSON function so requests already gives you a JSON function that parses everything at the JSON layout it creates an object for us so then what we can do is then is do result dot JSON and then put that into a dictionary so uh, result dict so that dictionary here if we look into it, so result keys, er, keys. Oh, this is a response object. Oh no, it's not results. <laughs> it's result dict. So that dictionary, and then just get grab the keys of the dictionary. We're gonna see that we have the chart. So you know, there it goes. So then we have the chart. So let's access that key, and there you go. We are in business. So now that we have access to this JSON file, we can just then query from the result uh, what we need, which is the regular market price. So let's do that. So let's do the same here. So result.json, let's return that into a result.dict for dictionary. And what we're gonna do here is do a click. Click has an echo option. This is just, it's better to, than using print and uh, click because this is actually going to handle better the um, terminal interfaces that you might be using and we can do a result dict uh, and then what we can do here is just um, grab the chart key so this guy right here then result so then let's go to result and let's go grab the, the 
position zero here, because there might be one result or multiple results. We, we're going to handle the, that later into other videos. And meta, so let's choose the meta of that query. And let's do uh, the regular market price. So regular market price. There we go. So now it's going to print out that information from this request of GME. Let's try that out, shall we? So let's open a new terminal here and just do a fancy wallet, get, and then GME. Get GME, well, price, right? So because get itself actually needs the price command, then we're going to be price and then GME. And got an expected, expected extra argument. Right, because I'm passing an argument here to GME that I'm not, that don't have it. That's fine, we can do that later. And there we go, we have the prices of GME. So now if we want to query something else, we can actually just append here to this the um, stock that we want to actually uh, query for. And of course, that is going to be an argument that we saw in the last video. So argument, stock, and we're going to pass that here. And now we should be able to query for any stock price that we want, GME and 159. What about Tesla? There we go, 589. And that is it. How easy is it? <laughs> All right, so next time I'm gonna try to add a little bit more, you know, um, things around the, the things I'm actually gonna, gonna try to surround this with tests and things that are gonna help us to be more reliable because especially if you type anything crazy in here now, it's gonna just throw an error. That is not fun. <laughs> especially if you have a, a command line interface that people might be using for. All right, that's all that I had for today. Have a good one, guys. Please subscribe if you wanna see the, the next videos and catch you in the next one. Bye.